Margaret Chan, the head of the World Health Organization, stressed again the need for Ebola therapies and vaccines as a part of the global response to the current Ebola outbreak in West Africa. The whole world is responsible and accountable to bring the Ebola threat under control. Let's do it. Action, action and action. Echoing that sentiment, Dr. David Nabarro, the United Nations Senior System Coordinator for Ebola, who recently returned from the region, had this to say. Let's make sure that everybody who's working in the country has the cash, the materials, the equipment, the vehicles, the fuel, the supervision, the training, the discipline, guidance, information system support, communications guidance, so that the response can be as effective as it can be. So far, Ebola cases in Guinea, Liberia, Nigeria and Sierra Leone stand at over 3,000. A large number of healthcare workers are also infected. With few health workers in the region because of the Ebola virus, along with less access in the quarantine zones, more pregnant women and children may die from preventable illnesses. More than one million people across Somalia face acute food insecurity. Until the rains start in October, unless we can deliver a good solid humanitarian assistance, these nutrition figures and the food, secu food security figures will worsen further. Several towns in Somalia previously controlled by Al-Shabaab have been liberated by the Somali National Army and the African Union Mission in Somalia. Residents have been returning to the town of Bulo Marer, which has been used by Al-Shabaab to recruit soldiers. The United Nations Children's Fund is calling on the international community to make violence against children disappear. Just because you can't see violence against children doesn't mean it isn't there. Make the invisible visible. New data found that one-fifth of homicide victims globally are children and adolescents under the age of 20. Changing attitudes uh, with respect to violence against children requires, you know, so many things, but it starts with knowing, with having knowledge. And this is one of the things we're hoping to do with both of these reports, the data and the strategies for action. A lot of people don't even know this is happening. So if we put a report out in the public domain, it's a little bit like saying, now you know, you have to do something. Susan Bissell said that governments must do more to ensure children are safe. Legal and policy frameworks need to be in place in every country to protect children from violence for prevention purposes and response purposes. And it's only when we have those frameworks that we really truly can hold governments accountable. And from the Pacific, $1.9 billion for sustainable development partnerships. That is what over 100 countries pledged at the Small Island Developing States Conference held this week in the Samoan capital, Apia. The gathering focused on what small islands need to deal with issues like climate change. The big problems of our small islands will sooner rather than later impact every country irrespective of level of development or prosperity. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon took part in the conference. While in Samoa, he was crowned a Samoan chief. Your prosperity, your happiness. He also stressed the need for humanity to transform unsustainable consumption and production practices and patterns and a business-as-usual mindset. Bandia. 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 Bandia.